Hello and welcome back to Jessie Bear Book Club. Today we are talking about Colin Eagleton's Eagleton's. I have to write his name down because it's a weird one. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. His series about Genghis Khan. And I know a lot of people who have recommended this book to me. Mainly men recommend this book to me when they find out I like historical fiction. They always go read Con, Con Eagleton's Genghis Khan series. It's really amazing. So I finally thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. And I got the first three books. And they're definitely what I call boys' history. There's a lot of battle scenes. It's very male-focused. There are some female characters, but they're not as important. All the POVs tend to be male. And there also tends to be an awful lot of battle scenes. Way too many battle scenes in way too much detail and a lot of emphasis on weapons and this weapon in particular and what it looks like and its hilt and its scabbard and this and that and bows and you know what I mean when I say boys history you know when men talk about cars or when men who are into history talk about swords and they get really overexcited that sort of stuff which is fine I don't mind it so much but they've definitely streamlined Genghis Khan's story. They start in the first book when he's still Tenujin, when he's little, and the death of his father. And I know a bit about Genghis Khan. I've watched a few documentaries. and They definitely have streamlined his story. They've cut out his father having more than one wife. They've cut out, they cut out the bit about his uncle taking over. They just make it some random henchmen. I, I would have kept that in. I definitely would have kept in, you know, the stuff about the other wife. I would have kept in the stuff about the uncle. I did like the fact he killed his older brother. They kept that in. I thought that was good. I thought that the mother's kind of reaction to her oldest son being murdered was kind of subdued. I was expecting her to kick him out. And this is one of the things that happens in the first book is it jumps ahead a lot. So you jump from like, 10 to like pretty much nearly 20 and I mean it works I know why people do it it's a creative choice no shame it's still a good book but I like to see the struggle I like to see what made a character and there wasn't enough reflection for me it kind of went from boy to man to vengeance in the first book which is fine you know it worked but I would have liked more detail but that's me personally you know? Coming into the second book, I I thought Genghis got a bit cold, a bit too cold. And then I, his POVs in the first book were so relatable and normal. And then in the second book, he becomes very cold. There's like this mask that goes down over the character and I found him harder to relate to. Then I really started enjoying his brother's POVs. And I like the stuff with the shaman. That was good. I, I like a bit of, you know, creepy, spooky magic and what people think that somebody can do when we don't know about science. Like, that was pretty good. And I also liked him marrying the Qin princess and the kind of sister-wife bitchiness that was going on. That was good. I would have liked to see a little bit more family dynamic within Genghis's family, though. You don't see... You get a bit between Zhou Qi and his other son, like their rivalry. But I would have liked to see more of the boys. I also would have liked to see more of Genghis's sister. And I would have liked to have seen more of his daughter. Because they talk about his daughter in passing, like his singular daughter. Also, why didn't they give him his other wives? You know, it's well documented in history that Genghis had a lot of kids. You know, something ridiculous, like I think like 70% of that part of the world can trace their lineage back to him if they do their DNA test. It's insane. So why did they only give him two wives? You know, could have done with a bit more. I think it also would have added to the kind of overarching story because we know certain things about Genghis Khan and that's one of them. So I thought that should have been included. They also did not include the bit where he boiled those men alive. I mean, that's in all the documentaries, like his blood brother portrays him, he captures them, and then he boils them alive to not spill their blood, you know? That was not included in the first or second book and I kept waiting for it. I kept, you know, anticipating that it would happen and it didn't. And I was a little bit let down by that. But 
the sacking of the Kim cities was really 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 good I especially like the falling of the petals where all the women committed suicide dressed in white by jumping off the walls oh my god that was so beautiful and so well written really 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 good uh, the problem was though when we started getting the POV of you know the people in the Kim lands I started relating with them more than I was with Genghis and his people and I found them more sympathetic which I know you're not meant to I know they're meant to be the enemy and stuff and you're probably meant to relate on some level but they have little tiny POVs whereas everyone else gets enormous ones and I was just like I want to know more about these people I find them more interesting their culture more interesting because maybe Genghis's nomadic lifestyle is slightly hard to relate to he doesn't think within the scope of history he doesn't really think about money and I mean it's interesting <clears throat> but after two three books it's kind of tiring because you're relating to someone you have nothing in common with or you're trying to relate to someone you have nothing in common with in the third book I felt it got really messy really quickly there were too many POVs going on and I was finding it really hard to keep track of everyone's movements and everyone's thought like people were overlapping a lot and it was difficult to keep track of everyone and everyone's movements within the map because of course they're on campaign and I don't know I found it messy and that's when I kind of started losing interest in the series I was like I can't keep up with all of this I want particular characters that we follow I don't mind the odd new character but when you've got four or five and you maybe get three POVs of them and then you don't get another one and I don't know it's not for me it's not for me and it broke my heart because I really liked Pure Key, Genghis's oldest son. I really liked his story about whether or not he was actually Genghis's son or whether whether he was a rape born bastard, as his brother kept saying. And I emphasized with him, I really, when he fought the tiger, I was all for it. I really wanted Genghis to embrace him. He gave him the sword. And when he ran away from Genghis, I was like, you go, Pure Key, like, you go, like, you deserve to get away from him, he's horrible to you. But then when Genghis ordered him murdered and the murder was so benign, like I was expecting at least some sort of public execution. And what did we get? We got a slip, throat slit and not mentioned again. No, no, I'm done, I'm done with the series. That was the moment I put the book down and I was like, okay, that's it, I'm finding something else to read. Um, these aren't for me, I've tried them. I, I would recommend them if you're into that sort of style of writing. They are really good. They're just, they're too masculine for me, for lack of a better word. And that's just what it is. I'm sure there's a lot of men out there that wouldn't want to read Philippa Gregory. But I like Philippa Gregory and Calm Igledon. I might not be the biggest fan of your work. It doesn't mean to say I won't try with some of his other books. I know he has a complete series about Rome. So I might try that at some point. I think I might go back and reread the Iron King series and start making reviews on that because I ran out of wildcard books on Audible and I need something to listen to on my lunch, you know? But thank you for watching this overview of Calm Eagledon's Genghis Khan series. I only read the first three books, but you know, it's a review. I'm not gonna keep going and this is only a little one. And I'm sorry if I kept looking down, I had notes written you know, to make sure I covered all my talking points. Until next time, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on Calm Eagledon's Genghis Khan series, if you've read it, or if you were like me and you started it, and then you lost interest, unfortunately. Until next time, bye.